The race is now coming thick and fast uh, amid the sun-drenched slopes of Brands Hatch. Next is the British uh, F4 Championship and a chance to see Abby Pulling, who has just created history by becoming the first woman to win a British F4 race. She did that earlier today. She'll be back on row six with the championship leader, Deegan Fairclough, on pole. Uh, so this is round six. Let's, let's join Phil Glue and Richard John Neal uh, in our commentary box. Thanks Thank very much, very Steve. Much. Phil, welcome back. Happy New Year. Thank you very much. How are you Good going? Good to be back. Yeah, it's a bit hot in here, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's nice to be back. And yep. uh, it's great to see the first race uh, this weekend, uh, obviously won by uh, our lady driver, Abby Pulling. Yeah, a bit of history made there. Yep. Uh, she's got a lot of work to do to try and make it from 11th on the grid in this one. But Deegan yep. Fairclough who's already a race ahead in terms of points uh, ahead. But let, let's, uh, let's just have a look at how they're going to line up. Uh, in this one, which is, remember, now from the the overall qualifying, basically, race three is, is what we're seeing. Fastest in that qualifying session was Deegan Fairclough with Alex Ninovich alongside for Rodin, so it's high-tech and Rodin on row one. Fincis by Argenti, Rowan Campbell-Pilling pulled it right out of the bag in qualifying. He starts third from another high-tech runner, Mika Abrahams. James Higgins for Rodin next up from Reza Seaworthen for high-tech. He is sick. Zach Schooler, who won the rookie race in the last one, and Yuan Poot Sui for Fincy Spy, Genty Jack Sherwood next from August Raber, then Abby Pulling 11th, Leo Robinson lines up in P12, Martin Molnar and Alex Berg on row 7, Kai Darianani with Joel Bergstrom on row 8, row 9, Bart Harrison and Max Dodds, I think Max might be starting from the back, Chloe Chong, Nita Gabeman, Ella Lloyd, Yu Hao Fu, also known as Felix, I understand, starts at the back of the grid in the 99 car, so that's our grid. There is Ella, and we're showing you Ella because there was an incident in yesterday's race. Mika Abrahams had a partial stall on the front of the grid, and he's actually the car on the right, and Ella cla clashes into him, goes up on two wheels, and that brought out the safety car. The track was blocked, safety car actually went through the pit lane. Like, Ella was okay, that's the main thing. Her mum was obviously, I think, having kittens at the time, rightly so, but Ella was okay. She was warned about one of the cars, on the radio, because they have a radio system. I think when we were at Donington, uh, Jade was saying about that they don't have a radio. They do have a radio, um, and it's like the radio having F1, because this is trying to mirror the, the driving experience yep. that they get. So the engineers can talk to the drivers, and to be fair, you know, if Ella hadn't had the radio warning, that could have been a lot, a lot worse. worse. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So let's see what we can get in race three of the weekend. Fairclough and Ninovic on the front row of the grid. Campbell Pilling. And Mika Abrahams are behind, so away we go. It looks like Campbell Pilling maybe slower away than he thought. He's fighting for third place. Coming up from behind him, I think, is James Higgins, who's trying to get up into third place. But Deegan Fairclough, they'll be keen not to let him get away. I think it's Ninovic that's got the lead. He got a good start. I think Ninovic is leading. I think Fairclough's in second. And that's Campbell Pilling. No, that's another high-tech car in third. It is Ninovic, isn't it? You're yep. absolutely right. So, Deegan, uh, now we've got a race on. Yeah, we certainly yeah, have. Let's see, what, let's see what Fairclough can do. He's got his teammate behind him. In fact, he's got both teammates behind him. Seaworthen has got up to fourth as well, so great start from the high-tech cars. A really good start from Ninovic in the uh, Rodin car. So uh, let's uh, see how this uh, unfolds. And further back, we've got some great battles with the XL cars, the CDR cars, another uh, some JHR cars there as well, and, and Virtuosi. So Fortec uh, running side-by-side side there with uh, JHR. And let's see if Fairclough goes for a move early on in the race. Ninovic has got that one covered. Yeah, well, certainly there was notice of intent, wasn't there, from Deegan Fairclough, but he doesn't hang about. He'll want to go out with another win. I mentioned just before the grid that he's got already, he's got a race in hand points-wise. It's not unprecedented in F4. Alex Dunn, I think, has got the record for the biggest lead after three races of the season. Uh, Zach Schooler looks to have a little look there. Zach, one of the new drivers, rookie driver in the championship, brand new team. Yep. XL Motorsport, wonderful to have them. Rookie win for him. CDR running well, so many great drivers. Here's the start they feel. Yeah, you can see that Ninovic just got a very good start from second place, which actually is always a better place to start. It's not quite as much in a dip, whereas pole is in the dip, and it's very easy to just bog down or get too much wheel spin, which it looks like that's what happened to Fair Club. Everyone else got through turn one nice and uh, safely there. Ninovic's got it covered, but is Fair Club going for the inside? He's got it covered once again. He did a good job not to lock up there. Fair Club is on a mission. Rodin will want to grab another win. They've won the reverse grid race, and most of these youngsters will tell you they're not interested 
in reverse grid race wins. I remember last year talking to Deegan when his head was on the floor after a rubbish qualifying at Knock Hill. And he said, I said, you, you know, go out and win the reverse grid. I don't want to win the reverse grid. I want to be P1 on qualifying. <laughs> yeah. And I get that. I understand that. Abby Pulling's going to take it for sure winning the reverse grid race. She's Absolutely. over the moon about it. Yep. And massive congratulations to her on doing so. But this is a keen battle. This is what we expected to see. Over the course of the season, Sverdlap again has a look. He's leaving Ninovich in, in no uncertain terms, in no uh, doubt that he is going for it. Yeah, absolutely. It uh, looked like he was going for a move into Paddock. It's a very difficult one to do that because it's a very fast uh, corner. Seaworthen there in fourth. He's getting the three-car toe at the minute. He's just set fast his lap of the race. So great effort from, uh, from the newcomer coming out of Ginetta Juniors into F4 this year, joining a team that have won many races. He's just set fast his life. He's pulled away from Higgins as well. Sherwood is in sixth. And like you said, we've got some uh, the new team, uh, Excel, who have come over from the UAE, did a great job out in the UAE F4 Championship. And, uh, yeah, also doing a good job here in the UK. But that's, that's Novovic. Uh, Ninovic has just managed to pull away a little bit with Fair Club. Fastest lap as well, yeah. Fastest lap for Ninovic, who's getting into a little bit of rhythm. And he's been very quiet, you know, when you go around the paddock and talk to him. He does chat. He's a personable young man, but he just likes to keep his powder dry, keep a little bit in reserve as we're watching Sherwood here heading this group. So we've got Sway behind him, Johan Poot Sway, and then Zach Schuller in the pink trimmed white and blue car for XL Motorsport. The yellow numbers, again, I remind you the uh, numbers of the drivers that are first year car race drivers. So if you've done Janetta Junior for a season, you don't count as a rookie. That's a little bit hard on the likes of Max Gardner. Sherwood. Sherwood goes wide and Sway is going to go through on the inside. He's got the run. Now Sherwood's going to maybe give him a little bit of a, a wheel bang here. He's certainly trying to be mindful of where he is side by side across the line. But you have put Sway has got the line coming into Paddock. Yeah, he certainly has. That was a mistake from Sherwood. He might be able to get it back on the cutback coming out of turn one. Yes, he has. But Whoa. Sway has put him on the grass. A lot of uh, wheel banging there. Managed to get away with it, but now it looks like Schuller is going to get down inside. Is there still oh, wheel banging? Sideways moment from Sherwood. Schuller is coming up as well. Can he do the outside at Graham Mill Bend? That's nigh on impossible. I tell you what, he goes wide. Oh, Palmer will be sent up to Palmer will be sending him a picture of him going wide and onto the grass, and he drops back. And Abby Pulling comes up through now in the number nine car. Abby Pulling has made fantastic progress here. Yeah, she has. She's managed to get through with that obviously wheel banging that went on up at Druids. But yeah, Sherwood very aggressive there to try and keep his place. So uh, yeah, I'm sure the stewards won't be uh, too happy about that. But let's see how it unfolds for the rest of the race. But I love a little bit of, uh, <laughs> of, of hard racing. This is, this is such a competitive championship. We say it every year, but they oh, really yeah. are stacking up. And that's Bart Harrison in the red and yellow 77 with CDR, the reigning rookie champions. Down behind him is Alex Berg in the number eight, trying to make his way up as well. Pick up on Kai Darinani in the number eight. Alex Berg um, is uh, ahead of them. He's in the 48 cars. No, but Sherwood getting it all sideways here on the replay. He was so busy trying to keep uh, Shway behind him that uh, he had a big moment coming out of Druids when he uh, he just had a bit of opposite lock. As we go back to the leaders, I think uh, Fairclough has now set the fastest lap of the race. Yes, he has on a, uh, a 45.7 with a 45.8 from the leader. So let's see if he's just trying to work out where the best place is to overtake the black and white flag for number seven. So that's Fairclough. It is Deegan Fairclough. So now what we don't get is any information as to what that might be for. One would assume track limits, oh, track limits fastest lap track limits. Yeah, it is, yeah you're right, Phil. It is all. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've, we've, got, we've got the pictures to prove it because we've got the sensors <laughs> and the pictures to prove it. Oh, God, don't get me started. <laughs> you and Tim, you love that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, me and Tim were chatting about it earlier. <laughs> That's what's got me wound up. But let's see if Fairclough has now got a good run coming out of the last corner. He's not close. So I don't think for a move into Paddock, but maybe he's going to have a run out of Paddock into Druids. Maybe not, still not close enough, but he's definitely putting the pressure on. As now Reza Seaworth has done the fastest lap of the race in fourth once again. So these high tech cars who are trading fastest laps at the minute have obviously got something hooked up. They're running well. Let's have a look at Ninovich and see. Ninovich is in, in the position that's the, the right one for him at the moment. He won't want the pressure, but he will want to stay there in front and it's advantage to him he's not got the advantage that abby pulling had in the reverse grid race so we look at rowan campbell pilling 
who is what happened to Rowan because he started he's like third sort of lap down, isn't he? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I couldn't see what happened to Rowan. That's a big yeah. shame. No, that is a shame because uh, yeah, like you, we said earlier, we, we did meet him at the uh, media day uh, here or a test day here, and he was uh, very chatty, talking about he's taking his driving test. Really nice lad, and uh, yeah, shown some real good pace. Um, so hopefully we'll see him further up again uh, in the future. It's going to see him lose the rookie championship lead to Sway now, and School has really come on form this, this round, which is great to see for the rookie championship. Martin Molnar is third in the rookies at the moment, August Raber in fourth, so it's going to be tough, I think, to pick a rookie as we watch Fairclough. Now, those of you who are in mind, if, if Deegan Fairclough gets a penalty, I would say forget it, let's just enjoy the wheel-to-wheel -wheel race between these two. Yeah, well, they will anyway, because they'll, they'll fight it out <laughs> afterwards. But, um, yeah. they, they won't worry about it during the race, because it will be a, a time penalty. We've got another one for number 29, so that's uh, Raber, Raber in the uh, Excel car. Won't be a Raber party tonight, then, will <laughs> they? <laughs> Not with that uh, black and white flag. Uh, so let's hopefully hope that they don't do any more track limits, because we don't want to see any time penalties. We saw enough of them in the Porsches. Um, obviously, that's a long race in the Porsches. This is pretty long. Um, we're going to probably... Uh, yeah, we've obviously got another, another 12 minutes left. So. This is the shortest track we race on, so it's kind of inevitable, isn't it? You know, should, I think there's a little bit of leeway um, in terms of it. Trevor Williams, though, the clerk, of course, to be absolutely fair, is passionate about supporting these youngsters, mentoring them as best he can and doing the best job that he can. He's a super bloke. Well, that's what I like about the stewards nowadays. They're starting to try and use it more as an education yeah. to help the young drivers, because these some of these are only 15, 16 years old. So, you know, they, they don't they need to learn. They don't just need to be punished all the time. You need to learn from the mistakes. So I like that. And it's the same with the Genetta Juniors. They're trying to do that a lot more as well. Who, where who they, are they? Where what's, they what's that? Yeah, <laughs> championship that used to be on this package. <laughs> <laughs> they fell out. It's a long story. I'll tell you another time. <laughs> Yeah, but, still uh, running strong there. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, still very good. And a lot of the drivers come from that category into this. And uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of these names, uh, including obviously the highest one there is Reza Seaworthen, who uh, finished third in the championship last year in juniors. He's now uh, obviously joined this team and this championship and running strong. He's still got the fastest lap of the race. So I don't know if he can do anything about his teammate Abrahams, who, who did it last year, as we know, with Fortec. He was very strong, uh, didn't do the whole season, but was very strong with them. And uh, now going for a, a championship campaign with high tech. Abraham's in third, second year driver. It's the first time that he's raced here at the Indy circuit because he wasn't old enough last year. He was only 14 when we came here last year, so missed, I think, three rounds and grabbed that fantastic win last time out. So we go back to Ninovic leading Fairclough. You mentioned Janetta Juniors. Fairclough. BRSEC Fiesta Juniors. Yes, that's right. He Equ did. Equally as competitive a championship. Yep. Um, wonderful bit of club racing. And of course, if we're, we're talking about junior racing as well, I'm going to give a shout out to the lads and girls at the uh, Sax Max Championship as well. Probably not junior, the junior saloons. Saloon Championship. So let's it. give them a shout out as well. Yep, um, yep. And some great racing drivers coming through that wonderful competition too. Exactly. That's where we get all the uh, next breed of drivers from all those categories. It's where they can start their car racing very early at uh, 14 years old they start testing at 13 and then you can make a step into f4 when you're 15 years old so and then, and then your mum and dad file for bankruptcy <laughs> yeah that happens quite a lot i don't know why i'm laughing it's not funny no because you've it's got a, a lad that might start racing no he's, he's all right now he's working he's uh, he's 18 so he's, uh, he's away on his own now so uh, this, this has been this has been great though between Ninovich has, has driven superbly soaked up pressure and Ninovich of course hasn't really been in this situation where he's had long-term pressure from Fairclough so far this is the first go for him in being in this situation and this is going to set the tone in some ways for the rest of the year yeah definitely I, I, that's what I believe is this uh, this battle between Rodin who used to be Carlin it's now Rodin being renamed and uh, up against high tech same team exactly I wish you hadn't said people. Carlin because that's going to be in my head I now know, I'm going to call know. him it you know? look I even wrote it on my notes earlier <laughs> Carlin it's Rodin old habits die hard don't they <laughs> oh, yeah. so uh, yes the, the same team same uh, personnel all at Rodin and uh, obviously high tech stayed exactly as it was last year and uh, yeah the, the battle has uh, carried on as it has for the last few years um, so yeah I'm, uh, I'm uh, it's always exciting it's always good to have a good rivalry between uh, teams and drivers it, it's healthy for uh, for the sport uh, obviously it's got a little bit of a moment there as you can see Ninovic just working hard on the wheel as he uh, had a little bit of a moment as he got on the throttle that has given Fairclough a bit of a run not enough to make a move he's just showing his nose slightly but I think he just needs to to just keep looking after his tyres and seeing if he can make a move later on in the race, but only two tenths between them at the minute. Ninovich coming in, of course, you know, replacing effectively Louis Sharp 
who's up racing in GB3 this year. Yeah. Can't, they can't, they're not allowed to call it Formula 3, but that's effectively yeah. the specification. It's British Formula 3 at the end of the day, and it's yeah. uh, a good spec car, another step up um, before they move on to something such as uh, FIA Formula 3 or uh, or then F eventually F2 and F1. But, yeah, there's... Uh, a, we ought to give a shout-out, actually, to a, a, a certain Lando Norris for yeah. taking that first win. He won and, this category... Uh, He's the 20, first winner. 2015, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, was it 15 or 14? 2015, 15. I think. 15. Yeah. yeah and, so uh, he, he, at this stage of 2015, Dan Ticton was leading the championship, believe yeah, it or not. Yeah. And, and Noza, as J.B. Carradine likes to call him. Yeah. Noza. <laughs> love that. Love J.B. and his <laughs> affectations. Um, was, was fifth in the championship at that point. You yeah. never know, did you? No, I know. Yeah. He, uh, he came back strong. But Ticton had a, an awful... I remember it well. He had an awful middle part of the season. And, uh, yeah, he was obviously backed by Red Bull back then. And... Uh, was a uh, was definitely a star of the future. And he had a hoo ha with Ricky Collar, didn't he? Yeah, we don't really want to mention that. That was a, went a little bit too far, but he got banned for a bit. But he came back strong and yeah, uh, has come back well. And yeah, uh, yeah driving for Formula E. Um, as we see, Ninovic just running a little bit wide there again, coming out of clearways. I think that Berglund's got a bit of a run. If we see them going to Paddock, is he going to think about making? Here he move? comes. Oh. He's made Ninovic move to the inside. I think he should have waited and tried to do something up at Druids. He keeps showing his nose at Paddock. But yeah, it's a big old stop on the brakes as you come into Druids, then to second gear, using the hill to slow you down, using the camber as well to try and get the exit out of turn two into Graham Hill, which is turn three. And it's uh, there's sometimes a move on coming into the last corner, but you've got to be close enough through Surtees and then throw it down the inside coming into uh, into the last corner. But they're, they're just a little bit too quick, these cars, um, and you can't really outbreak them into that corner. But From the previous spec car, we would have done, I absolutely, think, with yeah. the tattoos, we would, yeah. we would have seen that. Yeah. The other thing interesting coming back this year, Phil, is in terms of obviously it's our first look at, at Alex Ninovich, but Deegan we know from last year, and we got to know him as a person, and, and he's just grown in. You know, maturity, confidence. He's not cocky, but he just has that little little bit of assurance about himself now. Yeah. To to know that he can do the job in hand, and I've got a feeling like he'll, he'll have a go for the lead, but I think he'll he'll take second. He'll take the points for that and know that he can bank them and go away with a good lead this weekend. Yeah. He's got a bit of a run here. This is a bit closer to thirty. This is the move I'm talking about. Has he got enough to try and get down the inside? It doesn't look like it. Oh, oh! maybe he has. Oh, Contact. That's the move I'm talking about, but you can see they have made contact. He has got a bit of, uh, of not damage on the front wing, but the wheel has definitely scrubbed the Pirelli sticker off. So that's uh, that was the move I was talking about. He's just a little bit late for my liking. I don't know whether he... Uh, and he's he... proved me wrong. He's not going to sit back and take <laughs> second <laughs> position. And, and, and I want you, you want to see a driver having a go. Yeah. And it is difficult. You, As you've said, as you described, it is so difficult to, to get the pass but he doesn't care, he's going he's gonna to go for it. I, I, I think Ninovic actually made a little bit of a mistake and went a bit wider, and, and I don't think Deegan was thinking about going for the move, but as soon as the door opened, and if you open the door with Deegan about that, he's going to take it, he's going to fill it. So, uh, yeah, that gap was filled for sure, but let's just see again. You can see the lines are slightly different. You can see Ninovic is just taking a wider line, and that is what's allowed... Deegan to get down the inside in the first place. That but wider line there is the, like the Formula Ford line, isn't it? Trying to get that run out of clear ways and get a bit more momentum yep. through onto the main straight, but it can leave the door open. But the fast line is actually the tighter line, in my opinion. It depends how yeah. they have their okay. cars car set up. Yeah, you can really carry a lot of speed into the corner if you can go in a little bit early, a bit like they do here at Druids. They turn in early, on the brakes, all the way to the apex, on its nose, try and get it turned and then give yourself the exit as well, so you get the best of both worlds. But Ninovic has obviously got a car that's working well for him by going for a wider line, can he able to turn it a lot easier on a wider line and still get the exit. But let's just watch them again as they come into the last corner once again. You can see, yes, again, the door's open. He's trying to oh. fill it once again. <laughs> That's just a different line thing, but I think uh, Bergdorf's got a bit of a run here. Yeah. Ninovic's left it open, he's going to close it eventually. That's the thing about coming onto the main straight here, it just closes down, he's almost having a look on the grass and very nearly paid a visit into the rear end of the lead car, but it's Ninovic still there out front, Fairclough in second, he's done it twice, he's probably going to have a third nibble now as they come up towards Druids, he's right in the wheel tracks of the lead car, fascinating stuff from the Rocket F4 British Championship, certified by FIA. This is a step on the ladder up to Formula One. So, so important. Remember, Lando Norris has made it up there. 
and won a GP for the first time last weekend. Ninovic affords himself a little look in the mirrors. This is the danger zone that Phil was talking about. Let's see how close he could get. I think there's a little bit more circumspect on the gap there. Yeah, absolutely. He, uh, he's, he's pulled away a little bit. I think that Deegan maybe should have pulled out and gone a little bit wider as he was coming up to Paddock on the previous lap. I think he almost couldn't see. He was hoping for Ninovic to, to go back for a normal racing line to try and open the door, but... Yeah, I think we've, uh, I was going to say, we've, we've only got, uh, I haven't got long left now for another move, but I reckon that, yeah, Deegan's not given up yet, has he? No, he never does, does he, Deegan Fairclough, in whatever he is racing in. When we saw him at the end of last year, we didn't know whether he was going to be able to continue this drive or not. He won last year's drive by virtue of a sim racing competition, which I think had over a thousand entrants, so he was, and that is a competitive world in itself. Um, and, and took it and I know he's very very grateful for the support he's had this year to get him on the grid again and it's a good decision because it's great to see him driving with the likes of Ninovic who's you know come from the other side of the world as many drivers do to ply his trade here set himself up in a world-class championship and uh, this is Sherwood isn't it it's a fifth position for Sherwood then we've got uh, Sway, Abby Pulling, Skula still second Bart Harrison is getting closer to a rookie podium. He's behind Molnar in the 24 car. Harrison in the red and yellow 77. So always got to try and keep one eye on the rookies. But of course, the main battle is out front, and it's Ninovic still there with Deegan Fairclough in that. Is it going to be a lucky seven number for him this year? A lot of people say that. Not quite close enough now. And I tell you what, Ninovic knows that. He's a, a little bit wider here. He's obviously taking the line that he feels is quicker for him but we're very much into the closing stages are we going to see a renaissance from fair club in these last couple of tours or not i tell you what these two have been pushing each other hard so they're obviously quick out front but the other two uh, high tech cars behind they're not far away at all so they could end up with uh, with picking up some pieces here if these two end up having a coming together with a, with only a couple of laps to go let's see what happens you've got a five second penalty for car 99 spoo yeah uh Foo's, yeah, Foo's got five seconds penalty. I think there's actually a few others with penalties, which we've not seen, but which is a little bit of a uh, bit of bit And that's the third place. Change for third place there in the rookie standings because going up into third is Park Harrison in the Chris Dittman row. They're defending the rookie title, and Harrison has gone oh, through. Oh, they're coming together. And and there's there's a contact. New, I knew this would happen. I don't have to have another look at it, but that is Ninovic out of the race with another lap to go. He's gone down the inside. Oh, that could have been a big one. They've, they've just got caught up on each other. I'd love to see the start of it. Look, he's left the door once again. He's gone really wide, in fact. And in fact, nearly hit the grass. So Deegan had to fill the gap. Oh, it's just a little bit unfortunate that that corner is obviously it's falling away. I actually don't think there's anyone to blame there. I think Ninovic has made him a he massive was, He was mistake. level with him, wasn't he? Yeah, he was level yeah, with him. Yeah. Now, is Deegan still leading or is one of his teammates? It looks oh, like... Deegan's still there. Yeah, so it's at the minute it's a high-tech one, two, three. Three, wow. Fairclough, Abraham, Seaworthen for high-tech. But yellow flags are out. I think this... Uh, we are going to see the end of the race here. Yeah, this is the final lap. So one, two, three for high-tech. Unbelievable. Up to the checkered flag, Deegan Fairclough. A dramatic race takes the win. Mika Abrahams is second. Uh, Reza Seaworthen is next up in third place. Then it's James Higgins. The Ampid Sway wins the rookie category, taking fifth position. And in fact, Bart Harrison's got up into second position in the rookies. That move on Molnar puts him up to second in the rookies. So, so much to take away. The rookie podium uh, completed by Molnar from August Raber. And just having a quick look down there, Abby Pulling made it through into six, so five places gains for Ali. Here's the repeat again. Yeah, we saw, we just saw that Ninovic just lost it. He went in a little bit hot, went for that wider line, actually had a moment before, ran very wide, and then unfortunately, just it's very difficult when you come out of that corner, you're fully loaded, and uh, there, there was just no room for the two of them, but oh, the clerk's going to have a field day with that one, isn't it? This is where we get to sign off and say, yeah, we'll leave it to the clerks, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, to me, tough one to call, but it looked like Deegan was level with him, certainly from where our camera angles. Well, let's have a look at uh, the... Result, Deegan Fairclough takes the checkered flag first from Mika Abrahams and Reza Seaworth and next up from James Higgins. Yampu Sway in fifth from Abby Pulling and Leo Robinson seventh. Alex Berg came through for eighth. Great progress from him. Bart Harrison second in the rookies from Martin, Martin Molnar who completes our rookie podium.
Next up was August Raber from Kai Dari and Arnie. Nina Gaidman, super progress for Nina, up into 13th from Zach Schuler, who dropped back to closing stages. Chloe Chong in 15th from Joel Bergstrom. Then it's Yu Hao Fu, followed by Max Dodds and Jack Sherwood. Ella Lloyd having some issues, sadly, a lap down. And also, as we saw, similar fate for Rowan Campbell Pilling and Alex Ninovich. So sets us up nicely. They are going to rerun the race that we missed, or run the race that we missed, not rerun it, but it hasn't been run. Um, the Donington Park one, that will happen a little bit later on in the year. Deegan Fairclough, it's fair to say, is a happy chappy. Nips across, has a word with Mika Abrahams, who of course grabbed a win last time out. And they're going to go over now and chat to Rez, who is there in the number four. Come on, Rez, get out of the car. Well done, <laughs> fellow. One, two, three. It's a shutout for high tech. And I would suggest, as we see the celebrations, there we go. Happy God. That's that's pretty special, isn't it, yeah. Phil? When all three, three like teammates get one, two, three. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Great job from High Tech. Well deserved. Um, but yeah, let's see what happens. OK, it's that time. Grab yourselves a cup of tea and a biscuit. We'll be back with these top three in just a few moments.